Juliet Lowe, who is our founder, um, is an ardent believer in the potential of all girls and in the importance of fostering their individual growth, character, and self-sufficiency. It is the largest entrepreneurial program for girls in the country. They raise $760 million every year. The wonderful part about it is that in an all-girl environment, the girls just blossom. They are not inhibited and they feel this freedom to do anything or be anything they want to do. Girl Scouts' global reach today started from humble beginnings during the heart of the progressive era. Juliet Gordon Lowe, a wealthy widow from the South, conceived the movement's vision while living in London. She met Robert Baden Powell in England and his wife, Olive Lady Baden Powell. Sir Robert Baden Powell, a former English general and war hero, founded Boy Scouts in 1908. She was from Savannah, Georgia, so she obviously started in Savannah. And she called her cousin and said, oh, this is great, we're going to do it here. Um, it's for all the girls in Savannah in America. And on March 12, 1912, Lowe and a handful of girls in Savannah gathered for the first Girl Scouts meeting. The group molded the organization's foundation, focusing on inclusiveness, the outdoors, self-reliance, and service. They were interested in semaphore and telegraphing, Morse code, um, in camping, outdoor events. Sports were the new thing. Back then, the girls usually were supposed to just have tea and you know stay at home and be prim and proper. And she says, no, you know, exercise is good for the girls. Um, right across from their national headquarters, there's a, a tennis court. And so she put curtains around the tennis court so that the girls could play basketball and still preserve their modesty. Soon, Girl Scouts ventured outside Georgia. Girl Scouts has always been very inclusive. Um, we started in, in um, 1912, and then by 1917, only five years after the organization started, we already had our first African-American troops. And then just a few la years later, we had um, Native American troops and Mexican American troops. I just want to say how very glad I am to have had this opportunity of meeting you all and hearing such good accounts of the success of your conference. The organization's arguably most lasting legacy is its signature bake sale that got its start in the kitchens of Girl Scouts in 1917. Girl troops were baking their own cookies and they found that it was really a good way for them to raise money to do the activities they wanted to do. In the Chicago area, they even published the Girl Scout cookie recipe so that the girls would have a definite recipe to use. They were very, um, very mindful of the costs of, you know, the ingredients, so they put out a, uh, a fact sheet which uh, let the girls know how much it would cost them to bake so many dozen of cookies, and then how much it was going to uh, uh, create in revenue for them if they sold them at a certain price. Come the 30s, local chapters were using bakers to commercially produce the cookies, a trend that spread nationwide. By 1948, I think we had 29 bakers across the country baking cookies. At the time, the licensed bakers produced three types of Girl Scout cookies, sandwich, shortbread, and chocolate mints, thin mint today. And we work in hospitals and child care centers and libraries too, don't we? Sure, that's fun too. Oh, there must be hundreds of thousands of girls who'd like to join. The 50s and 60s saw significant growth for the Girl Scouts. When the baby boomer generation hit, enrollment expanded becoming an ingrained part of childhood. Famous Girl Scouts have been in all, all walks of life, business, politics, education, actresses Barbara Walters, Katie Couric, um, Oprah Winfrey. Since Herbert Hoover's administration, the standing first lady is the honorary president of Girl Scouts of America. Well, what better way to highlight Let's Move Outside than to have gr the Girl Scouts camping out right here in a national park at the White House. Through the decades, 
The National Girl Scouts Council has evolved its core to include contemporary interests. They're interested in technology. We've got programming for that. They're interested in the outdoors and physical fitness. We've got programs for that. Um, anything really that a girl is interested in doing, we have something that can enhance it. The hope is to provide opportunities relevant to the 21st century lifestyle. Membership has declined somewhat in the past 10 years. We attributed that to one thing is the economy has somewhat impacted membership. Uh, and I guess you might say because Girl Scouting has been uh, such a forerunner in showing girls options, that girls now realize they have other options too. And so sometimes girls might start out in scouting, but then might find other interests. Of the 112 chapters in the U.S., each can develop their own initiatives to best suit the local troops. There are 146 countries in the World Association of Girl Guides and Girl Scouts. Um, when the organization was started, uh, it was the vision that it would be worldwide. And so we have really done well in making sure Girl Scouting, Girl Guiding has spanned the globe. And they continue to hold true to its founder's vision, empowering the future of young women. My philosophy is, is that I would like to bring Girl Scouting to every girl that would like to be a Girl Scout. Girl Scouting has opened so many opportunities for me. I love it. <laughs>